Hi guys, uh, this is Amelia from the Zen of Chemistry. Um, I've got a, a viewer or follower question um, about the sources of error in gravimetric analysis. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, what I've got is a bit of a diagram of what goes on so that you can have a bit of a, a, a visual if you like. Um, the example I've got is the formation of barium sulfate uh, as your solid for your, um, so usually you'd be, be looking at the um, determination of barium in something. Barium is a heavy metal, so quite often we don't want to be um, having barium, barium in any of our things like um, foods and drinking waters and all that sort of stuff. So this is potentially uh, the type of analysis we would do. So we would precipitate uh, barium with some sulfate and barium sulfate is our precipitate that we would get. So um, essentially what we've got here, when we're doing our precipitation, this is our sample in here. So whatever our sample might be, we would actually have it aqueous in, in a solution. And then what we do is we pour in excess sulfate. So really the, the concentration and the volume of, of that sulfate solution um, doesn't matter too much as long as you've got excess sulfate okay um, and so um, when you've got excess sulfate you're making sure that all of your barium has reacted and it's all turned into a precipitate so essentially what we've got going on is your reactions happening in here and we're forming our precipitate in this beaker here now um, one of the sources of error in this scenario here is that whatever your barium, uh, the, the substrate that your barium is, could potentially um, not have released it all in into solution ready for reaction. So you could actually have um, an incomplete reaction happening in here. And that's um, probably more likely due to the matrix. I remember there was a VCAR question um, I did a couple of weeks ago um, that involved uh, doing uh, mashing up apricots. Uh, to, it was actually a, a, um, a, an example of you, uh, determining sulfur uh, on the out surface of apricots. And if you can imagine that scenario, you're, you're needing to mash up those apricots so that that sulfur is released. And if you haven't done that efficiency, efficiently, that's a really big source of error. So at this stage here, really, it's it's the incomplete reaction that is your source of error. Either you, your substrate hasn't released whatever uh, you're trying to determine, or you haven't added enough number of moles to completely react off all of whatever you're trying to determine. So that's, that's the first stage there. The second stage there, what we've got here essentially is a mixture of water and solid. So what we need to do then is pour that beaker into a vacuum flask. So how these work, if you haven't used one before, we, it kind of looks like a conical flask, but what it's got is a little piece of glass off to the side that it actually uh, has a vacuum attached. And so it sucks the air out of that flask there. And what that means is it has to draw it in through. What It's kind of like a funnel there, if you like, with, with and you'd put some, um, some uh, it's kind of like filter paper in there. So it essentially means that, you know, if you were trying to do a vacuum, uh, sorry, if you're trying to do a normal to filtration, if you remember doing it in early high school, I know I remember doing it in high, early high school, um, you know, Filtration can sometimes take a while. So we use these vacuum filtration systems so that it makes it a nice quick process. Um, so from there, you know, the first source of error is making sure that you transfer all of your precipitate into your vacuum flask. So if you leave any left over there, that's going to be one source of error. Um, uh, when you actually are pouring it in there, so you're collecting your precipitate up the top here. If your reaction um, has not gone to completion, uh, what can sometimes happen is that uh, some of your precipitate can actually end up in the bottom here. So the, the reaction is a little bit slower and over time it actually will collect in the bottom here because it hadn't reacted all, all just yet. You've, you've done that filtration step too fast. So um, the other source of error, I guess, there is when you're pouring it in, if the precipitate, it can get in, in and around the sides of that filter paper and actually get through to the bottom of that filter flask as well. 
So really we're looking at, uh, you know, the loss of our precipitate is really our biggest source of error in gravimetric analysis. Um, uh, what else? So we, we've uh, poured all of, our, all of our precipitate in there. So hopefully um, there's that source of error of leaving some in the, in the beaker there. There's the potential for us to even just to have, get a little drop here and there when we're trying to transfer it. We've got our scenario where our precipitate goes through to the bottom of our vacuum flask. Usually it's because it's, it's gone in and around that filter, filter paper. Um, but then what we, where we're at here then is we would therefore go and wash that. So one potential source of error, it's very, very minor, but um, obviously you've got, if this is a complex matrix, you've got lots of different things in there, you need to rinse it out. So if you don't rinse it, you, that is also a source of error. So um, you need to very thoroughly rinse your precipitate so that there's nothing on there except for your precipitate. If you don't rinse it, there's potential for contamination there. Um, okay, so once you've done that, you would let it uh, run with the vacuum for a few minutes. Okay, and then what happens after that? It's still quite wet. Usually uh, the solvent that you're using is water. Okay, water, um, you know, at room temperature, it's not gonna, it's not gonna evaporate away. Um, so what you need to do then is actually to take your precipitate and transfer it onto a crucible. So you would pre-weigh that crucible so that you know that you have, um, so uh, you do a weighing by difference scenario there. But um, again, another, you know, this transfer of from our vacuum flask um, uh, filter in onto our crucible is another source of error. So um, you might drop some on the table, you might, uh, there's a little bit on the spatula, obviously it's gonna be quite hard to get it all out of your vacuum um, flask there so that's another source of error that we've got there um, and then we've so once it's in the crucible we would need to dry it okay another source of error could potentially be that you don't dry it well enough what you try to always do is dry it to constant mass or weigh it to constant mass so you dry it in a 100 degree oven um, and then you'd weigh it several times to make sure that it's not losing mass from from um, the evaporation of water. So you'd, you'd put it into the oven four or five times, depending on you know how how well it goes to constant mass. But essentially, what you want here is a very dry dry um, precipitate, and then you would weigh that. And then because you know the mass of the crucible, you could work out the mass of your precipitate. Um, obviously, there's going to be errors involved when you are, are weighing your materials, when you're weighing your initial um, substrate, whatever that's going to be, your initial sample. Um, and then there's also the potential error of your calculations. So um, those kinds of errors are us potentially there but if you've if you're thinking about it through logically and you're doing your calculations all correctly there you know things that can be avoided human error so really when you're looking at gravimetric analysis the types of of sources of error is really making sure you've got a complete reaction and then also making sure that you don't lose any of your precipitate throughout the entire process. What I have seen done, um, I've done a little bit of work in an analytical chemistry, chemistry lab and, and also a synthetic chemistry lab. Um, what some people like to do is actually weigh uh, so the, the top of that funnel in the vacuum filtration, you can actually weigh that funnel part and the, and the um, uh, filter paper together and then when once you've put your um, sample in the top there you can wash it and then rather than transferring it to a crucible you actually don't have as much error if you just go and dry that entire section um, in the oven so that's another way to reduce the way that uh, reduce one of your sources of error is just getting rid of that transfer step. But that's not always possible, um, especially in a school situation. Usually these need to be used for the next class. So they get you to 
pop them into a crucible. So if there's a potential for you to talk about how can you minimize the sources of error you want to be talking about or making sure that um, you know that you don't lose any of your precipitate along the way, making sure that your sample whatever it is is um, definitely homogenized and you've extracted whatever you're trying to extract uh, as efficiently as possible. Um, so if you liked this video, uh, whether you're watching live or watching the replay, I'd love for you to please uh, give it a like. Please leave me a comment. I'm really, really keen to see a bit of love on these videos and, and tell me how these videos are helping you. Um, so if you've got any requests for any videos, um, I'm taking requests if you send me a personal message or if you leave a comment on this video below. So um, please definitely do that. Um, and uh, thanks very much. I'm Amelia uh, McCutcheon from the Zen of Chemistry. Uh, you can find uh, me on YouTube. You can find me on the web at zenochemistry.com. So um, thanks very much for joining me.